started out to be a manufacturer, but now they are a manufacturer. 3D printing is how they're doing this, but, but what particular 3D printing process do they use? Um, so they are using selective laser sintering, SLS. Um, that's a powder bed fusion process where you've got a bed of um, polymer powder and the laser is just sort of selectively sintering uh, layer by layer and you end up with um, a block of parts kind of in this bed of powder. There's no support structures or anything like that um, and so you can just kind of break them out and, and clean them off and that's how you get your parts. Um, so to do that they are using two EOS 3D printers and block of parts, and it's the parts that are all different because they're all tailored to individuals. Right. Uh, so the enabling technology here is additive manufacturing, 3D printing. Yes, but there's also another really important part to this. Mm -hmm. So the way that you order your FITS frames is through a smartphone app. And it's actually only been in the last couple of years, so like the iPhone 10 and above, that the front-facing camera has the depth capability to capture the measurements that you need for that. Okay. So it's, it's printing, but it's also smartphone technology. So talk me through the process of ordering these glasses. All right, so it's this really cool augmented reality shopping experience. So you're looking at the, the screen of your phone, and you're seeing all the different frame styles kind of superimposed on your face. Uh, once you've decided on one, um, if you're getting prescription glasses, then you'd want to uh, you would upload a photo of your prescription, um, and then all of that information goes to Fitz Frames. Their software um, takes the style that you've chosen, adjusts the measurements based on your face, and that's what generates the file that goes to the three, to the 3D printer. Um, but the really interesting thing about their process is that once these are printed. That's not the, the end of the line. What happens after printing, the post-processing, is actually pretty significant. Yeah. So um, this is Katie Bassett. She's the VP of Product and Operations, um, talking about what happens after the printing. Once we print uh, our, our FITS frames, um, they're not quite done. They're not quite ready to, to go out to the customer. Um, we do some light post-processing afterwards, and primarily it's to smooth the surface, um, just to get rid of any sort of you know, tiny little artifacts from printing, and also just to get down to like a really nice, comfortable surface that you'd want to actually wear on your face uh, all day. The last thing we do is we dye them because they get printed in white, you know, in a white powder. And then after that, it's ready to go and get fitted with lenses and get sent out to the to the customer. All right. So as the customer, once you receive your fits frames, they come in a box like this. If I open this up. Um, What's your name? It's a label with my name, the style that I ordered, the color that I ordered, and right out of the, out of the box, these things fit. Like, you can just tell by putting them on, like, the, the bridge of the nose is just the right size, yeah. and the temples are just the right length. So different styles, but you're talking about how you just take it out of the box and it just fits. And that doesn't add up to me exactly, because I've, I've, I've shopped for glasses, and you put on different si styles, and some styles just don't work. So how does that work? Right, so the, the styles that Fitz Frames offers, um, they're not really styles in the way that we understand them because they're not static. It's not like there's one design that goes to everybody. Okay. Um, so what they kind of had to do is figure out different styles. They have um, six different ones to choose from and figure out which, which measurements, which ratios are really inherent to that style. Like what do you need to preserve? and which things can you adjust based on the specific face and, and dimensions of the person who's going to wear them. Can I say that's really cool? Like what, so what you're saying is like style as a math problem. So which dimensions do you need to keep fixed to keep the style versus which ones are allowed to change to customize to the wearer's face? Right, and so every pair of glasses, no matter what style, is going to fit your face because they're doing those, those adjustments on the back end. Yeah, and so you listed all of these, all these concepts that these glasses illustrate, and one of them you said was design freedom. Is that what you're talking about here? So that's part of it, but actually in the course of reimagining the process of buying glasses, Fitzframes actually made some pretty cool improvements to the way that glasses are designed. So um, if you just take a look here at, at the temples, you can see like the name of the company is printed right into the side. And then on the inside, you've oh, got that's your name too. You've got the chance to to customize the inside of the right temple. But one of the other really cool features is if you think about glasses and how they break like the hinge is a real problem like mm -hmm. that that is a, a fail point 
And um, what Fitz Frames has done instead, you can see there's no metal at all in these frames. What they have here is a snap fit hinge. Oh, ouch! You can just break your glasses? <laughs> so you can break your glasses, but you can also really easily snap them back together. Okay, so, all right, so you talk about that as a design improvement, and I look at that and I see a manufacturing process improvement, right? Because now suddenly these are much easier to assemble. There are fewer parts. Nobody has to order fasteners, screws to put them together. All of the components that are necessary to finish the glasses come right out of the 3D printer and right out of the post-processing. Um, the assembly part of manufacturing is much easier now. Right, so it's easier, and this whole manufacturing process is actually faster. Um, so here's Gabe again talking about the, the way that this affects their supply chain. You don't necessarily have to set up a contract manufacturing line, typically overseas, um, and then ship it and put it in a warehouse and deliver it uh, six, nine, 12 months later. Um, in our case, we're, we're shooting for weeks, if not days, uh, from the time somebody orders a product to the time that they actually get it. So I think the additive really does open up a whole new, uh, whole new supply chain um, and makes it really fast from the time somebody purchases to the time that they actually get a product that's custom made just for them. And so that turnaround time that he's talking about is actually pretty fast. So from the time that you complete your order with Fitz Frames to the time that your glasses are delivered is about 10 days. And they're working to, to reduce that even further.